Hey, what's up? I'm live. Let's see how many people actually show up for this. All right, there it is, the official notification. We are live. I'm gonna try to, hey, Gary's here. What's up, G? So I'm new to this, and there's Phil. What's up, guys? We're waiting on Josh here for a second. There he is. So I'm new to this, guys. This is something I want to do for a long time, and I feel like Instagram is the way to do it. But I'm extremely new, so bear with. I'm trying to, there we go. Let's see if it worked. Keith's here, there he is. All right, Josh, you're invited. Let's see if this works. Who else is on here? Yeah, we got we got everybody. Cute forehead. That's that's really great, Phil. That's terrific. Hey, there he is. Hi guys, how are you? What's going on? This is good. Are, is nice. your your phone mounted? Yeah, man, it's on my ring light. I'm going all out. God, you're you're legit. I'm like. Dude, I'm I'm trying, man. I'm I'm very new to this uh, culture. Hold on, time out. There we go. Now we can start. There you. Go. All right. Yeah. See, I'm yeah. just like hopefully holding my phone as steady as possible. That's good enough. It's a really nice sign behind you, and I'm not talking about that uh, monster neon either. Oh, not no, that. No, no, no. Other way. There it is. Okay. Right here. Yep. That's it. All right. For those of you watching, that's uh, courtesy of this guy right here. He hooked me up. Sign of vinyl, vinyl signs. It actually so, lights, but it, it it's so bright I can't uh, I can't turn it on. But for you guys, I'll I'll turn it on real quick just so you guys can see. Know, light that thing up, light it up, show everybody. See the work that this guy does. This is it. Boom. Oh, and by the way, Josh. Boom. I know. Look at that. Look at that shirt. Look at the swag. Honestly, one of the nicest shirts. Like this champion. It's super thick, super heavy, and it's great. So for those of you who don't know. Um, I feel like it's uh, about time to explain what I'm doing here. I've wanted to talk to celebrities forever, and I go to these conventions, and I meet them, and I talk to them, but, man, I really wanted to do a podcast, but this is way easier. There's no editing. There's no cameras. There's no uh, work involved. That's what it is, laziness. Yeah. Um, so this is my boy, me and Josh. He agreed to help me on this first one to kind of work out the kinks. And besides Phil's uh, big forehead comment, I think we're off to a good start. Um, and this is, uh, like I say, I wanted a podcast. This might be better. And um, this guy's going to help me figure it out. He's the end to my yang. He's the beavis to my butthead. It's Mean Josh, everyone. Let's all drink to Mean Josh. Yay. Hi, guys. Welcome, welcome. I'm yeah. excited. I'm so stoked. I've been waiting for you to do something like this for a long time, man. If I had all the time in the world and no kids and no mortgage, I think I would have done it a long time ago, having time to sit down and edit. I used to edit a ton of video. It was a lot of fun. But, man, I watched a guy do this, and I'm like, this is it. This is way easier. There's nothing to do. And I get a, an option at the end of this video to just boop, post to Instagram, and it's done. Yeah. Um, that's the way to do it. And so give everyone – what's that? If, if you don't know, Chris – you'll be wanting to check in on these. Chris cracks me up with the stories he tells me constantly of all these people that he meets on the regular. Like, and these people just like hang out with him all the time. Like it's, it's unreal. Chris is an unreal person. So if you're well, here, you, know what? You're you got to see it finally. You know what I mean? Uh, I took Josh to, oh, well, a few of us went to Josh's first convention uh, a few weeks ago and I picked a really good one. If you want to give the rundown, Josh, real quick before we get too into that on how we even know each other. A quick quick rundown because we have video games to play very shortly. Oh, we do, we do. It's a big stream night for me. But uh, Chris and I met in college. He was working at the uh, multimedia center uh, where all the people from college came to work on computers and stuff like that. Cal, and you logo right here. Chris was the lead graphic designer, and uh, I happened to be going to school for graphic design. I did a lot of stuff with video. So Chris and I were together a lot. And um, there's another guy that we hang out with, Double J. Um, the three of us were just constantly working on stuff, goofing off a lot at work, but uh, definitely. Now, here's the wild part. That was what, like 2009, 10-ish, I think, because yeah. I left in 2011. Yeah. And weren't we podcasting at that time? Uh, we were, but it was like for the school. Yeah, early, early podcast days. 
I mean, how many years ago was that? 2010? Yeah, 12 years ago, we were podcasting. So yeah. I've been interested in this for a long, long time. And then, uh, yeah, met Josh, and I still can't find it. I'm going to find it. I swear I still have it somewhere. Our original, I want to be a voice actor reel, where it was, I think it was a video. Yeah. You shot it, and we were having this idea where, hey, I'll shoot you. It'll be totally candid. Hey, I'm just going to spring this on you. But it was totally staged of like your top five voices. And we did it for each other. And I remember the I don't remember the first four. I, I know Plankton was one of them. But my fifth was just a fart sound. You were like, and make a fart. And I just went. Yeah, that was, that was number five. I'd say the worst. Uh, I, I know what my worst was. And I don't know where it came from. But I was just like, oh, this this will work. The Ray Romano as a mime. <laughs> and the fact Doesn't that talk? Doesn't the character talk? Yeah, just like, <laughs> but, uh, just do it. Just do it now. Just do it. It's time. It's time. All right. This is a very like I haven't done just this. Just do it, man. There's no setup needed. This is this is my. Oh, just do it. Twelve years ago was the last time I thought this is a good impression, <laughs> but this is Ray Romano as a mime. I'm Ray Romano. <laughs> I'm in a box, Deborah. Like I said, there's a reason why I didn't get a voice acting career as early as uh, I wanted. Um, no, I really need to get Ray Romano on and then just have him see that. That would be incredible. Yeah, I don't know why I feel like Ray Romano is dumb enough to be a mime, but still talk. But, uh, Debra! Debra! <laughs> yeah, we've known each other for a long time. It's been, it's been fun to see how, uh, you know, how much growth there is versus where we were in college and stuff like that. So, yeah. All the all the really boring stuff like jobs and kids and wives and stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But also, we went to conventions. Mm -hmm. First, first yeah. time you go to them all the time. This was my first one. I can remember my first one. I'll never forget it. It was awesome. Uh, what did you think of yours? We went to Sci Fi Valley Con. Shout out! And it was like voice actor heaven. Four original Ninja Turtles, some Rugrats um actors some video game actors some old horror actors it was just incredible and josh is one day going to be a famous voice actor so he got some input from just about everybody we we bugged everybody after drinking in the parking lot before tailgating for a nerdy convention and, uh, <laughs> we were the only if good advice they give us websites one guy was ready to sign you sight on scene apparently yeah. hey uh, do these couple things i'll just sign you're like uh, okay i'll do that that sounds great yeah, yeah. <laughs> there was two reasons for that one he wanted me to get out of line and two he was like but I, I i don't know if he heard the adam sandler you must have heard something but what if, if anybody didn't watch my stream the one night chris kind of he set me up twice the first time we walked up to meet the guy that does the voice for red dead uh redemption oh uh, yeah and uh this super cool he uh very, uh, you know, ego or anything like that. That, uh, you know, everybody was tailgating uh, before coming in. And yeah, he loved I it. Played Red Dead Redemption. So I told Chris right before we went up, I said, hey, d you know, don't tell him I didn't play the game. I don't want this guy, you know, to say something. And uh, we won't. What did up. I say? Chris is oh, I, I won't say anything. No, I won't tell him. That'd be and embarrassing. I he knew that he's asking Chris like what his favorite parts of the game were like he's kind of testing him and Chris is like oh you know I like this this and this and I'm just like I don't know, I don't know. <laughs> and so he looks at me and he's like hey you know and I'm like hi this is my first con like I'm really excited to be here he's like oh cool he's like what do you think of my game and, and Chris is like this dude never played your game this loser here and I was like oh, no no I promise uh, I have <laughs> Part in Amazon, like I'm, I'm I love gonna, it. You, yeah, you were like, I'm gonna go home. Uh, I'll download it and I'm gonna play it. I, I have to delete some stuff, but I'm gonna download it. And he's like, whatever. Here, yeah. like, uh, okay, thanks. <laughs> okay, great. Yeah, he's pretty cool about it. And then, uh, and then we were meeting all, all the Ninja Turtles. So this was all '90s, like um, stuff. So that's what I grew up on. I've wanted to do voices since I was a kid. So Chris, like do way ahead of time like if i'm gonna go to a con this was the one to take me to so it was super awesome uh and we got to talk to all four of the ninja turtles from the animated uh show uh chris has a signature there i got my signatures on this this little sign right here which chris made as well got all of them. um 
And I was talking to him and Chris just like randomly comes in. And he's like, hey, you should hear this guy's Adam Sandler impression. So I do it and I get a, an applause and then he starts talking to me about what I do now. And uh, then I, I'm one to say this guy was their manager because he just kind of hovered around them and was kind of, you know, you know, pointing everybody in the right direction and stuff like that. And he grabbed me at one point. He was like, look, uh, if you will let this long line of people come through and get their their signatures. I'm going to tell you everything you need to know about being a voice actor. Get out of the way. Exactly. Yeah. So he pulled me aside. He gives me this rundown of everything I need to do. And he was like, dude, you sign up and uh, and I'll be your manager. And I was really? on the spot. He, yeah. on with voice yeah. actor. On the spot. And I was like, all right, dope. So, uh, you know, ever since then, I've been trying to work on, like, biggest thing that they said is like, don't, don't do anything until you go through this entire site, get all the information you need. And it's, it's, it's a lot of information, but the stuff that I've read, um, I've gotten through about 25% of the site. Trust me when I say 25%, it's like a hundred pages of uh, information, but um, yeah, I'm excited. This is going to be my thing. Chris is going to be an actor. Uh, so it's going to be, it's well, dude, I went through so much. So background on me, I think is Keith, uh, so many Keith friends, so many Josh friends, I can't keep up. So, uh, a friend of mine is a professional actor, and that sounds like this. It's actually kind of like this. Sorry, Keith. But it's his job. It's his full-time job is to act. So I always send him texts, emails. How do I do this? I don't want to be a professional actor. I want to be typecast as a gang member, an inmate, a biker. I, I, I'm not going to be a priest. But it's so <laughs> tough to get, and it has to be so specific, and I – Every time I say, well, I can operate a motorcycle, I can do, here's my, and I submit these pictures where I look just mean as hell, nothing. So finally, I think I even said to Josh, if I don't get this one, I'm probably just going to give up for a while. I'll focus on something else. And that's that. And uh, yeah, I love to be a greaser, Keith. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you, just, you know, find me the movie, I'll do it. And so finally, uh, this one pops up in Pittsburgh. They're in desperate need. It's not even, they skipped this whole process just to get, 60 inmates that's the goal so i hurry up send all my stuff i just keep planning on something going wrong i somehow get the day off of work even though we're slammed that's cleared they say well you need a COVID test you have to come tomorrow so they're, they're telling me to do all these things that are during the work day and i somehow find a way to convince them let me go on my own and pay out of pocket and do the this and do that somehow it's all working so in two days i'll be going on set for God knows how many hours for uh, Jeremy Renner's show. I believe it's on Paramount. Mayor of, oh man, I've been thinking too much. Kings, not Kingstown. Anyway, so finally fulfilling one of my bucket list items of being in a TV show or movie. So I'm pretty jazzed about that. And something can still go wrong. It's still 48 hours away. Even though I keep getting like my paperwork to fill out and how I have to go to costuming and props and all these things. But all i want to do i don't want to be famous i just want to keep doing these horrible typecasts like horrible people that's all i want to be is a horrible person in a movie and tv show so maybe it'll be tv show check now i need a movie check where i'm on a biker gang or something and then we'll be all square then i then i won't need it i still need it then it'll be like yeah, i'll put in for that hopefully i get it i didn't i don't really care but man it's been so freaking tough trying to get one but from what I'm hearing, you get one, and then it's like, they got you on payroll already, all your stuff's figured out, and then there's no problem, so maybe this is the beginning of, you know, a few in a row, but hopefully, <clears throat> we'll see, but if I can go wrong in 48 hours, wishful thinking, I just, all day Thursday, I'm filming with Jeremy Renner, that's all I want to do, and I'm then maybe, and I mean, he's an incredible person, I've been hearing he's like a straight up and down dude that him and his brother flip houses on the side. He's a genuine human being. He can sing. So these are all things we should be talking about while we're having lunch together. You know, while we're hanging out, that should be what we're talking about. And that'll be perfect. That'll, then we'll be best friends and I'll be on here and then I'll go hang out at his house. It's a whole thing. I haven't figured out. I just have to let him know. So I'm looking at the time and I think we got to jump to um, what I'm going to steal from Justin Long's podcast is a lightning round. Okay. Since I talked to you, I actually kind of, I realized that I have three things, three categories that I put all these questions into, and it fits me perfect. Food, movies, and feeling good. Those are okay. the categories. We'll right. start with food. So tell me as much or as little as you want 
uh, <clears throat> answering these questions. So first question, Chips Ahoy or Oreos? Uh, Chips Ahoy, specifically, uh, that not the soft chewy, chewy. ones. Oh, I love the no. chewy. And specifically the Reese's peanut butter ones. Like, I don't know what they put in there, yeah. but I will, if my wife doesn't stop me, I'll eat an entire container of those in one sitting and I won't feel guilty about it at now, all. Do, by container, do you mean the horrible new technology where it's like the, instead of just opening a bag? Yeah, okay. Yep. How about burgers or dogs? Uh, depends on the mood. Okay. Uh, Growing up, it was always hot dogs, but that's because, uh, you know, nothing against my dad, but he just cooked crap burgers. They just weren't good. But once I had... So you don't have to defend yourself. I mean, he's going to be upset, but that's fine. Go ahead. I'd tell him, though. He knows that I, I make burgers better than him now. But um, I'd say uh, depends on the day, but um, like Five Guys is my favorite burger. So I, oh, found, a, I yeah. found a way to at my own house, like, like, it, it's pretty legit, and okay. I got. So I'd say, at any given time, it could go either way. But I'm, if I'm eating it, I'm, I'm crushing it. For You're sure. going, going hard. Yeah. Nice. Uh, Hummel just joined. I haven't talked to this guy in a long time. Yo, Joey. Anyway, uh, here's one. How do you order your pizza? Like toppings. How would you? What is Josh's favorite pizza? Um. <laughs> I'm a cheese guy. I'm 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 a square. So I'm usually a cheese guy, but I will say that uh there was a pizza that I had up in Maine when I used to live in Maine. This is a place called Otto's. And uh it's an unbelievable place. The pizza, uh it's all fresh, it's like brick oven style, and they had this baked potato pizza. And I would never oh. in my life eat it, but my wife got it and she said it's you like guys load. and it no oh, not... i don't know what happened go ahead uh yeah i keep no fine autos in Maine. yeah the auto <laughs> i think there might be one in boston as well um okay but yeah the the that that's the only time i like veer off but if it's just like you know, spur of the moment, hey, I'm getting pizza. I'm always just like, all right, give me the cheese. I'm kind of the same way. Now, are you going like, uh, I love a New York style. I love a big, flat, fat, foldable slice of plain cheese pizza. I'm a pan guy. Like, I like a like thick pan. Like Chicago pizza? Yeah. Yeah. Not like Uno style. Uno's, I, like, okay. Uno's no dish. Sonia. Yeah, not right. a dish. Yeah, yeah. Like a pan. Yeah, I got you. That's that's me all day. Like it. So movies. Uh, favorite Christmas movie, Die Hard Counts. So does Gremlins. Favorite Christmas movie. I'm gonna say um, I'm gonna say Christmas Vacation. Timeless. Absolutely perfect movie. I Those, will... that it falls into a category that me and my brother will watch year round. It doesn't have to be Christmas at all. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, that's an easy one. I... Good call. good no. answer. And it's always on that when it when it when I flip the TV and it turns on, I'll stop what I'm doing and watch it. Whether it's oh, yeah. five minutes yeah. or it's the first five minutes, I'm watching like the rest. Well, of the category of uh, if it's on, I'm going to finish the movie. I'm going to watch the whole thing to yeah. completion. Yeah. yeah. How about Star Wars versus Star Trek? Where you where do you land? Uh, get, Star it? get it land. Yeah. Shh. Sorry. Go ahead. I'm going to go Star Wars. Nice. I'm in. Um, I think I own. One Star Trek item have ever owned, maybe less than three or four Star Trek items. Star Wars, I had a Boba Fett collection for, Jesus, 15 years that might have been 300 items plus, plus all the other stuff I accrued over the years. Every little thing, like everything. So I, I am definitely Camp Star Wars. What about favorite guilty pleasure movie? Maybe you don't tell people that you love 27 dresses like I do. Oh, boy. Wow, that's a tough one. I mean, that bar scene in 27 dresses where they're singing Elton John is so good. I do like 27 dresses. I really like, um, who's, who's the, the male actor? Yeah, in that? Marsden. Yeah, I like him. Yeah, I'm. I like him in a lot of stuff he does. And then. Cyclops. He's the best. 
Man, I'm trying to think of uh that's a good one. That's a good question. Yeah. Um are you hiding one right now and you realized you're getting grilled? No, I'm okay. I'm I'm a sucker for like uh you know the sappy love movies. I I like I'm I'm all over the place. I'm not like hey I'm only watching this category, but I watch are, everything. Yep. The, the problem is is if I know like these movies are going to be really emotional and like a tearjerker, right? I'm watching it by myself. Like I don't want. Oh no, I'm not that way at all. I don't want anybody around. It's like no. I've, I've warned Heather. I've warned. I have warned my wife that. Let's say it's pre kids, right? we're going to a movie maybe we don't know it's not a marvel it's not a whatever and something's starting and she'll just feel me reach over and the cue has been i just kind of you know I used to touch her arm this is the sign that i'm going to be crying then she i'd see her that kind of went away then the next phase was i wouldn't warn her she just kind of learned who i was she knows i'm going to be crying then the third stage was i just see i'm crying at a movie which i cry in commercials but <laughs> just, but then she found it humorous, maybe because she learned who I was, and that. Uh, so I just see this, and I told her, I've said, "You're ruining my cry. You're ruining the healthy expression of my crying in a movie theater. Something I like to do. You're ruining it." And she has heard that many times. And the last and final stage is if she'll go like this. <laughs> Like the check, like I think he's crying, and I got reprimanded before. I don't, I don't really need to. Just let him do it. I'll just let him do it. And also, it's so common now that no one cares. She just like, it's like a Taco Bell commercial. I'm like, yeah, but the guy got all the sauce, and he just really likes sauce, and it's just really pretty and beautiful. And at the end, it's it's a mess. It's, um, it's good, you you're yeah. able to press it. I don't, I don't care. What do I care anymore? You know. Um, yeah. So the last part is the feel good, and you'll see the the common thread here. So, what was your favorite actor growing up? Not now, growing up. Favorite growing up, um, I would have to say it would be Adam Sandler or um, or Jim Carrey. The two of them, no matter what they did, like I was yeah, Jim Carrey was on fire forever to the theater. Like in the '90s, like those two were like. The two biggest, like, it's alive at that point, yeah. yeah, and that right up my alley. Like, I love that stuff. I remember my dad. The best part was my dad took me to all those. So my dad, right. loved, like, I remember going and seeing Waterboy, and the two of us doing Waterboy impressions on the way, <laughs> and stuff like that. Like, I'll never forget that. Like, we were yeah. even walking up to the house, and I, my mama said, my, my, my mama yeah. said that, my, and, my, 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 my mama said, my, mama said that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and I remember. <laughs> All right, we got to be quiet. We're going to wake everybody up. And then I just said it something and he busted out laughing. Oh, that's great. The, yeah. the most vivid memory I have of leaving a movie and it being like a big deal was Jurassic Park. So it was 94. So I am 11. So picture yeah. you're seeing that movie, 11. It's probably like an eight o'clock show. So now it's like 1030. And I, I don't remember the theater, but I remember it raining and it was pitch black and rain. It's like we're in the Explorer. It's raining and dark. Yeah. <laughs> it was just me and my dad. And I'm pretty sure he led on to like a, we got out of the theater and it's raining, it's dark. And he realized right away, he's like, I wonder if there's a T-Rex. And I'm like, probably. And I remember us screaming, just running to the car. It was like 11 seconds of my life that I just can't. Yeah. Forget like so attached to that movie and that was probably had to be the first time i saw it i don't remember going i don't remember watching it i remember running from a t-rex afterwards and now for those of you who don't know i drive that freaking explorer but it's a dodge but it is wrapped like a Jurassic park explorer i i can't get enough of that car maybe i should have wore those shoes for that i have the Jurassic park shoes there's toys everywhere it's just the best yeah uh, what about your favorite childhood toy um, I had all the Ninja Turtles, like the, like the OG Ninja Turtles, but there was one specifically that I played with. Is it the pizza guy? It, no, it wasn't the pizza no. guy. The guy's floating around here somewhere. He's up, he's, nice. up, he's up top there somewhere. Nice. Okay. Right there. Was, um, it, was it a Michelangelo? Can I guess, was it a type of Michelangelo toy? It was. And, yeah. and the way that it worked is the shell popped off 
and you yeah. could stuff the storage shelf. They're called storage shelves. Yeah, and then you yeah. could you could you could take their and turn them into a baby turtle. Yeah, and they walk like on all fours. Yeah, and it came with like some ooze, so you like. You I remember know, that. I, the thing I'll never forget is the smell, and I and I can't. Oh, the ooze or the figure. The figure, the figure. Oh, okay. It was it was this this hardcore manufactured out of China rubber. Right. I when I get whiffs of that in random like situations. Anywhere. Yeah, right. You're like transported. Like, holy crap, that's Michelangelo. Dude, I, I Heather hears me go, Oh, that smell. I'm like, I'm back in nineteen ninety eight. She's like, What are you talking about? I'm like, I can smell this. I don't know what it is, but I was in this area, I was doing this, I was with these people, maybe someone walked back. She's like, Why? How do you even recall that? I'm like, that's all I'm good for. Just some old recall. <laughs> what about Josh's perfect Saturday night as a kid? Oh, man. It's Snick, for anybody in on this video right now, Snick was it, all right? You were watching. You're telling me you like Nickelodeon. Oh, absolutely. Okay, good to know. Okay. <laughs> I was watching all that, Keenan and Kel. Yeah. I think Rocket Power was on at one point. For oh, Snick. so you're the generation after me. Just, just, yeah, just to taste right. that, because there's a lot of shows that you caught. And it, I was talking to somebody about this the other day. Isn't yeah. it how, like, a two-year difference in your age as a kid could oh, yeah. different, different worlds. Whether you loved a show or you yeah. have never heard of it in your life. No, absolutely. Because I, I haven't seen one full episode of Rocket Power in my life. Oh, my God. I love that show. That was my, like, like – my, I can't remember the first two shows – but the last two from like, because it was what, eight to 10. It was like, yeah, see, Keith, I was just about to say, Keith. Ray of the Dark. <laughs> Ninth, nine o'clock was Ray of Stimpy. 9.30 was Are You Afraid of the Dark? So at nine, um, I remember this vividly. And it was, for some reason, Saturday, I was always at my friend Danny's house in New York. So we're in, on like his, I think his parents' bed, or maybe his sister's there, all eating popcorn, cracking up at Ray and Stimpy. So... What I still have, like, this weird trigger, especially we're just talking about, like, transporting to a place. As soon as Ren and Stimpy, the episode's over, there's a closing theme where it's, like, some funky, jazzy guitar. It's like, as soon as I hear that, I get a little bit of anxiety because at that moment, all the popcorn is done. All of us have to, someone has to, is in charge of turning the lights off. Uh, we're closing the door. Now we're not just hanging on the bed like, eh. now we're on like our butts, like hands under our ass, watching the TV because the next thing you heard after a couple commercials was that, Ooh, and we're like, it's scary shit ever made. We didn't yeah. know it was kind of cheesy and campy and corny. But side note, I found out like two hours ago that every episode is on Paramount right now, Paramount Plus app. So I started going through and going, oh. okay. Episodes I forgot. I was looking for like my two favorite to make sure all the seasons, they're all on it, by the way. So Are You For The Dark is completely accessible on Paramount Plus right now. That is my night come like 1130. Um, but yeah. last question is, what's your perfect Saturday night now? Perfect Saturday night now. Um, it, does, it doesn't happen. And your wife's watching. I know she's watching, so I hope that she appreciates this and it, it Unfortunately, it just doesn't happen with three kids. It, it, I'm, we're doomed for the, you know, the next, oh, yeah. for the next 15 years. Yep. Uh, but going out with her to get a good dinner. I'm not talking yeah. like Applebee's or any right. crap. I'm talking like a high scale uh, steak place. Steakhouse. Yep. And then, and then to have something after, whether it's we're going like bowl or we're okay. going. Activity. Okay. We're going bowling or we're going to the movies. Like those, yeah. those, a night like that. Dinner and a movie, bro. Happened in probably 15 years. It's, it's, it's just really tough to, to make happen. But um, also we're starting to go fund me for the Megan and Josh uh, perfect date night. If anyone, I'll set up a link here shortly and uh, we'll get rid of those damn kids. That, for all. <laughs> that way you can have all the dates you want. Three is a game changer, man. You you put that on the radar, and a lot of sitters are like, "Huh?" Yeah, no, no chance, oh, man. Uh, I know a few people with three, and that's all I've heard. So I went, "Okay, I kind of wanted two to begin with, and now I know for a fact." And th 
be the medical scissors, that's probably not going to happen. So, <clears throat> well, listen, uh, we're wrapping up. This was dope. This was honestly my um, get a little tipsy, try to knock out this first one in like 30 seconds in. I felt totally fine. But uh, I've wanted to do this forever. I needed Josh to help, uh, guide me through my Sherpa through this first one. Uh, we can talk shit later when we're uh, off air and you can talk about lighting or content or audio or whatever. But um, that's kind of it. Thank you, Keith. And uh, I have some serious celebrities lined up, serious to me. I don't give a shit if you like them or not. But they are uh, people from 90s, people from major sports, uh, professional musicians, um, working on a couple actors. It's, it's all I wanted to do is just talk and hang out with famous people. So, like, again, thanks to me and Josh for helping me get in it and get situated. Maybe next time I'll drink less than seven beers. That'll probably be a good idea. And uh, Josh, you want to plug anything? You want to talk about uh, where people can find you? Yeah. Um, so uh, I stream every – right now it's every Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday. You go to twitch.tv slash Josh. Uh, you can find that. Chris – Oh, we might uh, lost my yeah. Hold on. You're and, cutting out. Start start that over again. Uh, Twitch.tv slash Mean Josh. That's where you can find my stream every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Friday at 9.30 p.m. Uh, it's usually with Chris, so the two of us are running uh, the best that we can. It's not always the greatest gameplay, but it's usually pretty no. good. Content, so I, I, I'm way more into the fun than performance. Yeah, I, I yeah, exactly. Yeah, we're actually, as soon as we're off here, we're going to start that stream. So feel free if you want to join in on the conversation, you guys can come to the stream. I'll be hosting that, so it'll be a little bit different as far as the setup. Thanks. But yep. um, Chris, I, I can't express it enough, man. I love you. I appreciate you putting me on your first one officially. I've been waiting for this Number for one. I'm telling you for years. It's like, dude, you got to do this. So I'm super stoked for you. I'm excited to see where this goes, and uh, I really do appreciate it. Hell yeah, man. All right, guys, uh, that's going to be it. Uh, stay tuned. Uh, this Tuesday thing might be, I, I think, then the guy I'm talking to next, it might be next Tuesday. So it might be a Tuesday thing. Uh, I'll let everyone know. Thank you, Carrie. And I'll let everybody know. You'll see some uh, graphics on Instagram, some story updates, and uh, we'll try to make it legit. So until the next one, peace. Bye, guys.